In this video, I'm gonna share with you everything I did in January of 2024. This is the first month of the year, and I started it off, in my opinion, pretty well. Up 3%, 73% trade win rate, 2.37 profit factor, and an 81% day win rate. So, in this video, I'm gonna show you how I did it. Let's get into it. Tracking your trades has never been more important, and it's also never been easier with Tradezilla. Shout out to Umar and their team for being a sponsor of today's video. We love the product. I use it in the Black Shirt Club every day in the mentor mode. I use the back testing and playbook section as well. I use it for my own trading. It helps me make improvements. It's the cute little calendar that everybody likes to see when I post my PL. If you want to start using Tradezilla, Use the link in the description. Use the discount code down below. Save 10% on either your monthly or your yearly membership. Start tracking your trades today. It's going to help you make more money. It's going to help you know where you need to make improvements. Even if it's something as small as, hey, I'm losing a lot of money on Tuesdays. Let's figure out why am I losing money on Tuesdays. Let's figure out what time of day, what instrument, what asset. All of that and more can be found in Tradezilla. So if you're not a big tracking journaling guy, just let Tradezilla automate and do it all for you. Plus, you save some money when you use the link and the discount code down below. So thanks again to Tradezilla. Let's get back to the video. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. If you're new, my name is Austin Silver. I really appreciate you being here. Today, like I said, we're going over everything I did in January. I want to talk to you about the stats, but specifically, I want to pull up all of my losses, let you rip me up in the comments. I'm joking, half joking. But by pulling up all of my losses, I want to share the lessons that I took out of January with you to hopefully help you make more money through the rest of this year. If you're new to the channel, just make sure you hit the subscribe button. I don't want you to miss any of the future videos. I do a lot of these tutorials. I've been doing a lot with Anchored VWAP and our A2 strategy. There's just stuff I don't want you to miss. We host the Day Trading Show podcast. I mean, if you don't know that already, you're living under a rock. So make sure you're subscribed. Tradezilla is, without a doubt, one of the pieces, I would say, one of the key variables in my success. By being able to document all of my trading days, all the trades I take, I can start to see what I'm doing really well, where I'm accelerating my growth, and where I'm hurting my growth. So shout out again to Tradezilla. We're going to see actually some of my daily report cards as we go through. Like I said, we're going to pull up all the losses. But before we do that, let's look at the nice stats. It was a good month, really, considering my average risk per trade. A 3.1% net gain is great. 73% trade win rate is right where I want to be. 2.37 profit factor, very happy with that. And honestly, I think the best thing, one of the key things we're going to talk about is my day win rate. 81% of the days, I end the day green. Now, if you look at the calendar, there was only two red days the entire month. As you can see, I took the last week of the month off because it was FOMC and NFP, and I was traveling intentionally because I knew that would be a shitty week to trade. But you can see with my red weeks, or excuse me, my red days, one of them was a flat day, 0 .00. So I really didn't lose any money on the 23rd. I was down $12, which is just not a lot of money. So really only one red day. And like I said, that's one of the things I want you guys to take out of this video. Just the fact that I'm focused on ending the day green. Even if that means leaving some money on the table for my own mental sanity, I want to end the day green. And as you can see, there's a couple of days that are not huge. 0 0.01, that was the day I just had to fight my way back to get to break even. 0 0.25, 0 0.21, they're not massive wins, but I take what I can get. I know my definition of enough, which I think is a huge thing that a lot of you guys should focus on. And that allows me to just say, hey, I'm up on the day, let's walk away. You stick a couple of these 0 0.2, 0 0.4 days together, you put up 1% pretty quickly. And then you do that over the course of a month and you end up up 3%. And it, again, there's some stuff we're gonna talk about today that I could be doing better. I should probably be up closer to five or 6%. But I am struggling with being a little too conservative, treating these challenges a little bit too conservatively. I am in a 250K challenge with top one trader, just so everybody knows that's what we're looking at here. I was going to include the futures trading I've been doing in this video because I started trading futures about a week and a half ago, right before the beginning of February at the end of January. I just am going to do that in a separate video. So we'll talk about that later. So let's just go through the losses day by day. First thing we're going to do is go to January 25th. I had a losing position, as you can see here on the screenshot of the P&L, but overall, I still ended the day up $614. So what did I do? I had a second trade on. Let's pull it up. And as you can see, I cut this trade. I was short. I cut the trade in profit here after closing some for a loss, but adding back in. So by adding back in, I was able to end the trade profitable, but by closing for a loss, I incurred that minus $174 position. So I told you I'm going to share all my losses. This was a losing position, but overall, if you look at it, I was plus 285 on that sell entry. So overall, still up about $110. Add that to the 500 I made earlier in the day on the buy, 
and we're up 600 for the day. You'll notice that a lot in this video. I have a couple of days in this month where I have flipped my bias. Maybe once in the morning I'm short, and then in the afternoon I'm long, something like that. So just pay attention to that. There's going to be some common themes. This was a good day overall, though. Fought my way through. Was very happy with that. Cool. First one. Second one. Swapped the bias and made it back. This was the day I told you we ended the day down $12, so technically a red day, but not a huge loser. So the first trade was a Bitcoin trade, put up about $548. Then I end up trying to buy SPX and I take a loss, but I sold SPX on the downside as it moved away from the buy price, made a little bit of money back and was able to kind of wash the day. So let me show you the first SPX trade. This was the losing position. I took some off here in profit and then got full stop here for about a five point stop out. That was the loss there on the, uh, or excuse me, that was the buy there that ended up on the loss. The win ends up here on the sell, as I was saying. So then later in the day, here's where I get stopped on that first trade. Later in the morning, about an hour later, I go short, took a bit off here, mitigating risk at the low of day zone, and then full out of the trade here. The entries that I'm taking in this video all month, it's either an A2 entry, which is shown with the flags, or a break of the VWAP, which I've taught both of these strategies through multiple videos here and in my course now. So that was the day that we ended just about break even, minus $12. So again, not the end of the world, but fighting my way through to just look at the PL and say, let me get back to even as close as I can to just live to fight another day. And there will be traders who tell me that's not proper trading, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't really matter to me. I'm just focused on making money and getting payouts. So tell me in the comments how wrong I am. I'm fine with it. This day, I did a shitty daily report card. So rip me up in the comments for that one. First trade, instant stop out on this Bitcoin long. I'm in on the break of the anchored VWAP. We have A2s in play long, but I still take the full loss here. I got half off as it broke down against me and then full stop on the rest of that there. But then the second trade, we claw our way back. I get short as it stops me out because now we're breaking the daily VWAP, which tells me the sellers are taking control. We're under the low of day VWAP. So I'm short with the stop at the previous structure where I was originally buying it. So this is me being unbiased and just reading and reacting to the anchored VWAP from the start of day. That moves lower, 75% off at 1R, full out near the yesterday's low and today's low zone. Pins that and bounces. So I had a really, really good exit on this. And that's how we fought our way back and ended the day plus $21. So could I have held that full position and maybe made a couple hundred dollars instead of just 20? Sure. But again, I'm trying to keep my mental clean, come in each day, find my setup, hit it, make my money, move on. Some days that's going to mean fighting to get back that first loss and just get out of the day with as little damage as possible. So another losing day. This was the toughest day of the month. It was Tuesday, January 16th. Six total trades, four wins, two losses. I lose the first trade. I win the second trade. I lose the third trade. I win the fourth trade, the fifth trade, and the sixth trade. So there's six different trades here. Really, it's five. The fourth and fifth trade are the same entry. So the first one, loss on Bitcoin, right at market open. I got long with the A2 long in play on the break of the anchored VWAP from the high of day. Instantly goes against me. I tried to get 50% off here, but it was quick. I pretty much took the full stop on this one. So I am down for the day. I then come back quickly with a win on SPX short, as you can see here on the break of the daily VWAP again. So you see all these entries are starting to look the same, even in my losses, right? Of course, in my wins, they're going to look similar too. We can have uh, a pretty strong level of resistance here from Friday's low above us trading away from that. I got full out here to cover the loss from earlier. So I end up hitting this with some good risk. I don't need the full 1R to cover that loss because the first loss, I was able to not take the full 1R stop. It was close, but that meant I only needed to be close to 1R to win and break even on the day. So that's what I did. Got the break even, moved on because I know that trading near the open, it's not normally going to fall straight away. So I know that it's going to be choppy. So I'll just take the win as it moves in my favor quickly. Then I try to get short again, SPX later. Now, after that pullback, this was a rushed entry. I did not wait for a candle to close under the anchored view up from the low. You see that? So because I didn't wait for a candle to close, I knew it was a bad entry. I got half off here and then I got full out before the stop loss. So again, not taking a full 1R loss allows me to... The sponsor of today's video is me, ASFX TV. With ASFX TV, if you don't know what it is, you can trade live with me and our team of funded full-time traders all week long. We offer live sessions in the New York session and live sessions in the London session. All of the videos are recorded and stored on our platform so you can rewatch them in case you can't be there live. But if you can be there live, we have a new live chat feature which allows you to send in questions, ask me what I'm thinking, give me a markup so I can give you feedback, and basically anything in between. So again, if you're looking to get funded, if you're looking to take your trading to the next level, you've got to take in new information. The best way to do that is through ASFX TV. We have 
four funded full-time traders holding your hand through the live market every day. So click the link down below, check out the free trial, and I'll see you on the next stream. Come back with the next trade and not need a full 1R, but if I can get it, I cover and I'm then profitable because I didn't lose the full 1R on the previous trade. So now I'm long Bitcoin here on the break of the daily view up to the upside. Stop is at structure, closed enough to end blue on the day, stop locked on the rest, and then I got tapped out right here. So now I'm up, ready to rock and roll on those two positions there. And then final trade of the day, just to put me over the edge. Now I'm short SPX later in the day, A2 in play off of the daily VWAP. And as you can see, I'm full out here, leaving some money on the table for sure. A2 is in play to confirm it. It just had to double tap the daily VWAP a little bit before the move actually was ready to go. So here, if we're being very nitpicky, if you're following me this far into the video, what I also need to focus on is finishing my daily report cards on my losing days, but also staying in my trades at the full risk. Because if I'm in a challenge, I can't be afraid to play with a little bit more aggressive risk. Now, the stupid thing I did, if anything, over the last month was this. I'm long Bitcoin inside this range. We knew it was in a range. We identified the range, as you can see here, from Asian range low and the previous day's high. So I knew it would have been better to wait for a break on either side of the range and trade away from it using those key levels as launch pads, either long or short. For some reason, I stuck in the trade all day. I removed my take profit when I went to go get a massage and I come back and get stopped out. This is the day that the SEC's Twitter account got hacked and they said the ETF is approved. Oh no, just kidding, it's not. If I would have just left my take profit in, it almost goes to 48,000. You can see up here on the right side. And that's where I thought it would go today, just being funny. It almost literally went there. And I had to take profit in at 47.3, the top of this zone, top of yesterday's high. I could have easily made money on this trade for being patient all day and dealing with the chop, but greed got the better of me. Removing the take profit, stupid. Stupid, especially when I'm leaving the desk. And that's what I get. I end up with the loss. So I just took the full L on this thing, full stop out, as you can see, minus 1200 bucks, and you just move on. So those were my losses that I wanted to share. Not a lot of losses to go over from last month. As you can see, only seven losers, but we're doing a sessions. You can see this is the entire month, January 1st, right? But still value to be taken out of those losses. And I'm doing better to cut them quick. I definitely could try to do that even better next month. But we're going to lose trades. So I think overall to manage those well makes me pretty confident to go into the next month. Now, here's some good winning days. So I just want to share this because I'm flipping the bias day to day using this lower time frame A2 and VWAP stuff. So on Wednesday, January 10th, first trade of the day, Bitcoin short pre-market off of the Asian range low, beautiful rip, 75% off at 1R, closed another 50% down here, tapped out on the rest of it right there. That starts the day, short Bitcoin, and then long SPX after the open at 1040. Long here, stop at structure, beautiful A2s in place, still making higher lows. Again, I took 50% off here. If I would have just left it alone, there was a lot of money to be made, 24 points to the upside. So by getting out, a little prematurely, I leave money on the table. So that's really what I'm in my wins and in my losses. So I need to just get better at that, staying in the trade for these wins, especially. So here on Wednesday, notice I was short Bitcoin, long SPX. Okay, so that's Wednesday. Now, if we go to Thursday, it's the opposite. It's long Bitcoin, no emotional attachment to the previous day. Long Bitcoin, break of anchor view up from high of day, A2 in play, stop at structure. Here, 50% off and stop blocked, close some more here, and then I got out tapped on CPI news here. So this was a before CPI entry at 6.50 in the morning, New York time. So I'm long Bitcoin on this day, and of course, because I just said it's a flip, now I'm short SPX, right? So the previous day, I make money trading the opposite direction on both of the same two assets. I'm not trading a whole long list of assets. This is really all I trade is Bitcoin and SPX. You can see that. And I don't care about the previous day's bias. I'm just reading and reacting to the day. Here, we break the low of day anchor, trading into a zone at the low of day. And again, look, I'm 50% off here when it has more juice to go. So I could make more money in my wins if I would just be a little bit more patient. There was a couple of wins this month where literally I closed the trade and within three minutes, it's continuing in my direction. So I have to try to stay in these trades a little longer and not just look at the P&L. That's where trading the P&L can hurt you. When you're just trying to get green, you do end up leaving money on the table. But that doesn't really bother me too much. It's going to bother people in the comments probably more than it bothers me. So notice I'm always trading with the daily VWAP. If the daily VWAP says sell, I'm selling. If the daily VWAP says buy, if we're above it, I'm buying. So I'm always trading with the VWAP, not really trading back towards it. So 
that was my two wins that I wanted to share with you guys from this month. But as you can see, it's been a really, really good month. Again, I give Tradezella a huge shout out. I give my team, the people I trade with in the Black Shirt Club, a huge shout out. And hopefully we have a really successful February. As we go forward, I want to let you guys know we are going to be dropping a brand new course here at ASFX. It's going to be separate from what we do with the day trading stuff. I already have the starter pack, which teaches you about the day trading, the strategies we use here, but now we're going to be shifting into some longer term investing stuff. So if you want to be updated on that, make sure you're subscribed here on the channel. I'll be putting out a lot of videos with Ben and, the, and he's the guy who's making the course with me. Um, we're going to be talking to you guys a lot more about that and giving you updates as it comes. So get excited. That's going to be, I think, just a very good complimentary piece to everything we already have on the day trading side of ASFX. Now we're going to be talking about swing trading and investing and higher time frame stuff. So it's good. We're kind of giving you guys everything you need. Plus, then you come to ASFX TV, you see it done live, the whole nine yards. So trying to help you guys make as much money as possible in every way that we can. I want to thank you guys for watching this far into the video. If you are not a member of ASFX, if you're living under a rock or maybe on Mars, I'm offering you 25% off our starter pack and access to our Discord chat with the link flying in above my head. Use the card to save 25% on the starter pack, you're going to learn four back-tested strategies. And like I said, you're going to get access to join us, trade with us in our Discord chat. Now let's get back to the video. Appreciate you watching all the way through. If you did, make sure you're subscribed. Hopefully, if you're a subscriber, you're probably the ones watching this far. So thank you. Appreciate you guys. Please let me know in the comments if there's anything that was unclear, if you'd like to see more of anything in February's review when we finish this month. But I hope that this uh, gave you a little motivation, gave you maybe some new insights. Maybe you're looking for the anchored VWAP and A2 strategy. I've got more videos to kind of teach you more about that. So like I said, here to help in every way that I can. Make sure you're subscribed. I'll see you guys in the next one.